In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to publish your Android application in the Google Play Store. We'll look at some preliminaries, including how to prepare our app and the uh, launch assets. So we're going to need some icons and we're going to need some screenshots. So we'll go over how you actually can take those screenshots from your emulator device or even your real device. We'll look at how you sign the app and finally how you submit the launch assets along with the binary APK that we generated to Google Play. All right, so the first thing that we need to do before we go to the App Store and submit our app is we need to build a signed version of the APK file. The APK file is the application package and that contains the compiled version of your app and all its resources. And what I want to do right now is just take this Top Tracks app that we've just been um, working on and literally deploy it on Google Play so anybody in the world can download it. So first step is to build that signed version of it. And so to do that, you're going to right click on your project and go down to Android Tools on the pop-up menu and you have an option there, export a signed application package that's the option you want to pick. When you do that a wizard is going to pop up and it's going to basically walk you through the process. So the first thing is is what project do you want to click and since I had selected and right clicked on my project it's going to have that by default which I'm going to accept by just hitting the next. Then it asks um, where is that key store file? So that key store file you're going to have after you've gone through the developer registration process. So it's just a file on your disk and this is where mine is on my local disk and it's going to remember this so you don't got to type this in every time. After you do it, your, if you browse to it on your first time, Eclipse remembers this forever after that. And you're going to use that same key store for all your apps. So if you have more than one app in the future, you know it's always going to be that same one. And it's going to be password protected if you follow the instructions. And I do put a non-trivial password on this because you don't if somebody does get it, they're going to need to know the password to, to actually use it. So I'm going to type my password in. And there's an alias in there. And I only have the one, and that's what it's going to use. So if you follow the commands, you're going to have something very similar to this. I'm going to click Next. And then it's going to ask you where do you want the destination file to be and I've already done this once today so it remembers I've created a subdirectory called launch assets and that's where I'm gonna put this file okay and it's warning me because I built one a little bit earlier today and put it there um, and I'm gonna click finish and that built a signed version so if we navigate down to that directory and it's in a directory called launch assets and there's my APK file so it's 72k it's very small and that's the file that contains my compiled program and all the resources so that's what I'm going to upload along with a bunch of metadata and graphics and stuff to Google Play so let's go to Google Play and the easiest way perhaps to get there is to follow that link okay so it's play.google.com slash app slash publish and I want to use a different account so I've got more than one developer account here, so let me go back, use this account. All right, so I am now at my developer console, and I've already deployed my Top Tracks app several times in previous demos, um, including a dry run earlier today to make sure everything was working. So I'm going to, rather than punch in all this metadata, um, I'm going to update a new version of Top Tracks, and you're going to see exactly the same thing, really. But if you were going to do a new one, a completely new app, 
you're going to go and click upload like I just did and it's going to ask you for the APK file so you'd go and browse to your APK file and upload it and then at that point it's going to put you in the edit form just like we're going to end up in when I click on the top tracks existing app so let me back out of here and this is the app that I'm interested in so here is the app details and you'll see some screenshots and the way you produce those screenshots is very simple did I demo that already once okay so what you're gonna do is run your app which I've already done so my app is running right now if you go over to your DDMS and you select the device so I've got a physical device and an emulator running here so I'm gonna you can take the screenshots on your physical device if you want I'm just gonna do it on the emulator because that's where it's running so if you select the emulator and see this little camera icon here if I click that it's going to actually capture my device and I can say save this and there's my launch assets directory and this is called device 3 because I already got a 1 and a 2 so there's a screenshot and let's put this thing in a different mode so let's let's click on a link here so we'll click on the song okay so there's the song page so let's go refresh there's the song page so let's save that one and we'll call that device 4 because it's my fourth screenshot Okay, so that's how we can take screenshots and we can take them off a physical device or an emulator it works great either way and so if we look down in the assets directory here's those two pictures I just snapshotted so there's one there's the other okay I also so what I do is I create a directory and I put all my launch assets in one place so I don't gotta you know run around looking for all this stuff when I'm ready to set I'm got everything organized I'm ready to go so I'll have a text file where I put my description of my app and my changes all the textual data I'll put in this file so I can just cut and paste it when I get ready my title and here's my 5 by 5 or 512 by 512 my high res launch icon and my binary that I just built okay so these are what I need to get my app launched so if we go back, um, here's all the metadata. So let's go ahead, um, let's, let's take a look at this one. Let's replace this with one of the fresh ones that I just took. So we'll say choose file, and under my launch assets, there we go, and device three, let's take that one. Okay, then we'll upload it. Okay, and now I've got that new file up there. I could add another one. So we'll put number four up there. We'll upload it. Okay, so now I got four screenshots associated with this app. And I've already uploaded the icon. I'm not going to change that. I did not choose to upload a promo graphic. Um, or a feature graphic, um, you probably should. I just didn't do it. It's optional. Um, if you want to know what those look like, let me show you. So if we go to uh, if we go, so some of you might have tried out the MyGV app written by RT people, there's your uh, feature graphics. So they uploaded this nice image of Grand Valley. So if you're looking at their page, it kind of graces the top of the page. Looks real nice. Okay, so you can actually control all these things on your app page when your app shows up. Okay, so let's go back to the console. Um, I don't have a privacy policy URL probably should I don't have a promotional video but if I wanted to I could put all that in there here's my title and then here's my description and let's put something 
which is new. This app hasn't changed much. Updating it is fun. So just to show you, this is live. Um, and I can play if it, different settings here, app type, application, or game. And I've got it set to music and audio, but you know I could go and find a category out here that it is suitable. Um, copy protection is being deprecated, so I always take the off. You got to figure out, you know, what what type of content rating am I going to have on this app? And you can click the learn more to kind of make a judgment call on what your app is at. Um, and then finally, the pricing. Now, I have not set up a merchant account with Google, but if you have a merchant account set up, you can actually, um, you know, put prices on your app, um, and then they share the profits with you. I clicked all countries. It's going to go in all the countries that Google operates in, or at least Google Play is in. Um, now, I don't have any localization resources. All my language here is English. That's all I've supported. So if anybody in these countries download it, they're going to get my English prompts. Everything's English. Okay. If you're really interested in making your app work well in Germany, then you would translate all those English prompts and you'd put a specialized resource file in there for German language and for French and, 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 and so forth. Um, and then when people load your app and the device locales are set for that locality, it's going to run with the right resources. Okay, so it's really straightforward and easy to do that internationalization. You don't have to. Well, if they're using some other language, no, no. If they're using another language, their device is by default going. If you're in, um, I don't know, if you're in South Africa, you're and you speak Afrikaans, your device is automatically going to generate use the Afrikaans resources, if they're there. If they're not there, they're going to use the default, which we've set to English. Okay. So if somebody was in India, you know, they're going to get the Hindi resources if, if you've made those available to them. Okay. If not, it's going to use the default. So I'm going to make it available in all these countries, but I only got the default English prompts in there. So that's the only language it's going to run in. Um, supported devices, that came from my manifest. And then finally, they want your contact info. So I, I put the university website here. Um, and here's our support email address that I put in. And I put in my office phone number. We haven't talked about cloud messaging yet, so we won't talk to that. And then you finally got to click through the legal stuff here that says you're being good. And at that point, we can publish, but we didn't upload the binary yet. That's on this tab. Now, I have uploaded several versions already. I've got a version 1, 2, and 3. And notice I can have different versions running at the same time. So if I set different API levels, I could have specific binaries for specific devices if I wanted to. Okay, So all of these guys right now are um, not available so because I've unpublished the app and I want to upload yet another version. So the, the latest, the most recent version I have uploaded already is version code 3 with the human readable version identifier 1.2. So this is controlled in your manifest. So initially you're probably going to have you know a version code of 1 and a version name of 1.0 but when you do your revision you're going to increment that. So let's do a revision on this app since we've already got version 3. So I'm going to go into Eclipse and go to my manifest. And up here at the top, it says version code 3, 1.2. That's already out there. I want to update my app. So I'm going to put version code 4. And I'm just going to, this is a minor release, so I'm going to say it's 1.3. And now I got to rebuild because I changed my version. So I'm going to go back in here, control, right click, uh, export, okay, so that dropped that in that file, and now I'm going to upload it. So if we go back here, and I want to upload an APK. 
choose the file, upload. Okay, so these are the permissions I'm asking. It's version 1.34, so it read everything fine. It's saved as a draft, but I want to save it as official. So it's out there. And okay, finally, I will publish it. And now, this app is published and available to anybody in the world. Now, it takes a few seconds for this thing to show up or minutes. It's kind of weird. Sometimes it shows up really fast. Other times it takes a bit of time. So it says it's here, but it see how it shows up here in the store? But when I click on it, it's not available yet. Okay, so it this afternoon when I did it, it took like 20 minutes before it actually became available. Other times I've done it, and it was like instantaneous. So I don't know if it's because Google I.O. is going on right now, and there's lots of things happening on Google's infrastructure because of all the excitement. I'm not exactly sure. 